hello and welcome and if you are new to our channel do subscribe like our video comment while you are watching and also share with your friends and your relatives so that they can be blessed get ready to experience life-changing transformation with psalm 103 the ultimate guide to unlocking god's blessings in your life and there are also other psalms and scriptures that we are going to use tonight so that you can have the blessings of god released in your life now one of the powerful quotes of psalm 103 is that you and i when we start serving the lord he forgives all our iniquities and he hears all our diseases and when i discovered this passage from psalm 103 it literally transformed my life for good i knew from then whatever i have committed in the past god has forgiven me and whatever disease whatever sickness will ever come into my life god can heal my diseases now when we worship and serve god in spirit and in truth god sees it that uh, he sees to it that we are rewarded and you are never serving the lord or worshiping the lord in vain god always rewards those who diligently seek him not just uh, seek his hand or his face or his power but truly seek him as a person it would be unjust and uh, unfair of uh, the god of justice to forget and uh, go even further to ignore your worship your labor and your service of love which you have bestowed toward his children and king david realized it that when he worshiped god and served the lord god will never take him for granted but in turn god will also bless him with many benefits in the book of psalm 68 verse 19 in the new king james version david said blessed be the lord who daily loads us with benefits so god daily loads his true worshipers is a true servant with benefits the god of our salvation he says Silla. so pause and meditate on what you have heard that the lord daily loads you with benefits and david realized that as long as he remained active in the service of god god will overlook many of his flaws and cause his goodness to be his portion all the days of his life on earth that's what david said in book of psalm 23 verse 6 the new king james version david said surely i may doubt other things but of this statement i'm going to make i am certain he says surely goodness and mercy what i do not deserve shall follow me all the days of my life provided i resolve to dwell in the house of the lord forever david resolved in his heart no longer to backslide from the lord but to serve the lord all the days of his life stay tuned as we delve into the topic of today now there are benefits for people who have a constant and a steady walk with God. The emphasis is on a constant and a steady walk with God. You see, if you backslide and come back to confess your sins, God will be faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Just like uh, the father received the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, forgave him and embraced him again. 
but I want to show you an excellent way of worshiping and serving God instead of constantly backsliding from the Lord and coming back to repentance God wants us to refuse to backslide from him but to resolve to dwell in his house like David forever when you are determined to no longer remove your hand from the plow once you have set your hand on that plow but you want to continue to serve the father and always be with him and even furthermore when you decide to no longer withhold anything that is yours from the service of God including your person but you want to give it your all not your best shot no God doesn't want your best shot you say to yourself I will uh, make uh, my hardest and most enthusiastic attempt to worship and serve God and if it does not work I will just stop that's not what God wants God wants you to give it your all and even the way also God gave you his all he gave you his only begotten son so when we are worshiping and serving God we give our all now, when you give your all to God in worship and in service to your Heavenly Father, He in turn says to you what also He said to the elder brother in that Luke chapter 15. He says, you have always been with me and you have served me. Therefore, all that I have is yours you can take whatever you want from my house and you can have it whenever you want it that is what is written in luke chapter 15 from 29 to verse 31 sometimes those of us who worship god and serve him do not even realize how enviable people are of us because all of the benefits that we are enjoying daily we don't even realize that uh, God is doing something good in our life we take it for granted and we are ignorant of the benefits that we've been enjoying if only we can see and many times when we stop serving the Lord we realize that uh, some of the privileges we were enjoying unwittingly have actually stopped David envied the gatekeepers of the temple. He envied the ushers in the temple of God. And he said in Psalm 84, verse 10, the NIV, he says, Better is one day in God's courts than a thousand elsewhere. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper or an usher in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked so david looked at the ushers that were in the house of god he looked at the doorkeepers the security people that were guarding the gates of the temple and he said guys you do not know the kind of benefits that you are enjoying from the lord you are taking it for granted all the blessings that are happening in your life but i'm telling you serving the lord comes with uh, lots of benefits now, some will say, I will worship the Lord, but I will neither serve him nor his people. They will forfeit the benefits they were supposed to enjoy. Now, let me explain something to you about uh, the Hebrew language. In Hebrew, a word can have more than one uh, meaning, but all those meanings are actually connected to each other now the hebrew word abad means uh, to work to serve to till as uh, someone is tilling the ground to be a bond servant or a slave and also to worship so all these uh, translation of the word abad are actually linked therefore when you use the word abad you should not just say it is a serve or worship or being a bond servant 
or working for the Lord tilling his ground. So when you serve the Lord, you cannot say that uh, I am just worshiping him, but I am not working in his vineyard. I am not uh, his bond servant either. I am not a slave of righteousness. Uh, you can't say that you are worshiping God and you are not tilling or plowing in his field, in his vineyard. Because all those things are the same when it comes to worship, are bad. Now, that is why when reading different translations of the Bible, sometimes it is translated worship and other times it is translated serve. It is not that one translation is wrong and the other one is right, but actually the two renditions are equal and they need to be brought together. Now, when you read Exodus chapter 23 from verse 25 to verse 26, the New King James Version says, You shall serve the Lord your God. But the NIV Version says, You shall worship the Lord your God. What Moses and the Bible scholars like Paul understood of Exodus 23, 25 to 26 is this. You shall worship the Lord your God by becoming a slave of righteousness, by serving him, working in his vineyard, tilling and plowing his field or his vineyard, and he in turn will daily load you of his benefits. He will bless your bread, your water, and take away sickness from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, and he will fulfill the number of your days. He will fulfill your lifespan. So that is the correct rendition of that Exodus 23. Now, before we continue, our discourse on the benefits we enjoy when we serve the Lord and worship Him in spirit and in truth, we would like to hear from you. Do send us your prayer requests and your testimonies of what the Lord has done in your life. Use the WhatsApp number and the email address that you see on the screen. Remember, when you send us your testimonies, you encourage other viewers to also believe that God is able to do the same miracle in their life. Now, we have seen how David envied the doorkeepers or the ushers of the temple. David also envied the singers in the house of God. He said, for instance, in Psalm 84 verse 2, I'm going to read it from the NIV, he says, my soul yearns, my soul even faints within me for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Now, he says, he, when he looked at the temple, he entered into the temple, he even saw that the sparrow has found a home in the temple of God, and the, the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near the altar of the Lord Almighty, my King and my God. And David goes on to say, Blessed, happy, and to be envied are those who dwell in your house, O God. They are ever praising you. So you see, David even envied the sparrows and the swallows who had made their habitation in the temple of God, near the altar of the Lord. David wanted to serve the Lord in any capacity that he could, either as an usher, either as a choir member, he wanted to serve. He envied those who were serving the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, I beseech you by the mercies of God not to be consumers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you and I should learn 
to truly serve the Lord. That is what a true worship means. Dwell in the house of the Lord, work in his temple, serve his people, and practice righteousness. Now, there is another Hebrew word, kabad, which is extracted from uh, the word abad of worship. And kabad means uh, honor, weight, and glory. It is uh, used uh, when also we are talking about God, referring to honoring God. So one of the ways we worship or serve the Lord also is not just by ushering in the temple, being gatekeepers, but also, not also only by singing in the church, but also even by giving of our wealth to the Lord. The Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 to verse 10, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Solomon said, Honor, that is the word kabad, which has its root in uh, abad, which is worship. So honor or serve and worship the Lord with your wealth and with uh, the best part of everything uh, you produce. Then he in turn uh, will fill your barns uh, with uh, grain and uh, your vats will overflow with uh, good uh, wine so you see the transaction happening here when you worship the lord also or honor him serve him and worship him with your wealth with your riches with your substance with uh, the best of everything that you produce he also will make sure to multiply it back now let us look at some of the benefits king david told us uh, he was enjoying uh, from God because he worshipped and served the Lord. Now in the book of Psalm 103, we are going to read the entirety of that book to discover the benefits that David wants us to know he was enjoying. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now both in Hebrew and also when you translate it in Greek, to bless means to be happy and to be envied. Therefore, when you are truly blessed of God, you ought to be a happy person. And uh, you are going to be also envied by everyone because uh, of uh, the benefits that you are enjoying, that the Lord is daily loading you with. So a person who is blessed is supposed to be happy, not depressed, not downcast, not uh, murmuring and complaining. He's supposed to be happy. And he's also going to be the envy of everybody because of that kind of blessing. So David goes on to say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The reason why we complain and we murmur, though we are blessed, is because we forget the benefits that we are enjoying. And what are those benefits? David is going to enumerate them one by one. He says, God forgives all your iniquities. Whatever you did in the past, when you confessed them, he forgave you. And also who heals all your diseases. Yes, your sicknesses and diseases, he heals them all. Who redeems your life from destructions. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So God renews your health. He renews every single organ that you have. It says the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Sickness is the oppression of the devil. So God executes judgment on uh, sickness and disease. And now he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. You are going to enjoy the mercy of God. Now, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. God is not angry with you forever. Whatever you've done in the past, when, you for, when he forgave you, he also 
was no longer angry with you. Now, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. The punishment for our iniquities was upon Christ Jesus. For as the heavens are higher above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Now, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust, we are mere mortal, we are flesh and blood. He knows it, that we are bound to have some missteps. Now, as for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Your children, your progeny is going to enjoy the mercy of God to such keep his covenant. So if you keep his covenant, his mercy is going to be extended even to your children's children and to those who remember his commandments to do them. That's why you need to be a slave of righteousness if you are serving the Lord. Now the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Now he says, bless the Lord, you his angels as well who excel in strength even reminding the angels that you should not take it for granted you need to be happy and you, because you are enviable you are excelling in strength these are the benefits that the angels are enjoying they are excelling in strength who do his word heeding the voice of his word he says now bless the lord all you his host you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Now bless the Lord all his works as well in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So this is what David is reminding himself to be happy because he is enviable by all. For the Lord daily bestows his benefits upon him. And you also can uh, appropriate uh, the benefits of uh, Psalm uh, 103 and all the other benefits that you read in the Bible. Now, whenever I go through something in my life, especially something bad, I remind God that uh, I do not merely worship him with my lips but I serve him. I am active in his vineyard. I serve him with my wealth, with my substance, with everything that I produce. And I pray the same way Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah came to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah refused to, to take a salary. He was entitled to receiving the governor's salary, but he did not want to be a burden to the people, so he served for free. So Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 19, the NLT says, Nehemiah prayed, Remember, O oh my God, all that I have done for these people, and bless me for it. Yes. So he was very specific. God, I've done a lot of sacrifice when I was serving your people. And bless me for it. The same name I also said in chapter 13, verse 14 of NLT version. He says, remember this good deed, O oh my God, and do not forget all that I have faithfully done for the house of God and 
its uh, services. So he did a lot of things for the house of the Lord and also he served in the house of the Lord. He restructured the the way the priest was supposed to be paid, the Levi was supposed to be paid, while he himself did not collect any penny. He prayed to God that, God, you are going to pay me back. Now, when King Hezekiah was on his dying bed, he knew he had served the Lord. He was not just a consumer of the gospel. Therefore, he was supposed to enjoy the benefits of healing so he cried out unto the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 38, verse 2 to verse 5, I'm reading from the NIV version, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with a wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes and uh, Hezekiah wept bitterly you know yourself when you have been serving the Lord when you've not been idle and you can come boldly before the Lord and present uh, your service to him present your giving to him then the word of the Lord immediately came to Isaiah saying go and tell Hezekiah this is what the Lord the God of your father David uh, says I have heard your prayer and seen your tears and I will add 15 years to your life. So you see, it pays to serve the Lord. Not just with your lips, you are worshipping God with your lips, but to be active in the vineyard of God, to practice righteousness, to work in his vineyard, to be his bond servant. In the book of Acts, chapter 9, from verse 36 to verse 42, we have the account of Dorcas, who was a true worshipper. She was serving the people of God, and when she died, the church refused to bury her. They summoned Simon Peter to come and raise her back to life. So when Peter came, they took him to the room where the body of Dorcas was lying lifeless. All the women whose husbands had died were standing around crying. They were showing the clothes Dorcas had made for the widows while she was still alive. And Peter made them all leave the room. Then Peter went on his knees and prayed. He turned to her and said, Tabitha, or Dorcas, get up. She opened her eyes and looked at Peter and sat up. So Dorcas was raised up back to life because the people understood this one was not just a consumer of the gospel. She was an asset in the kingdom of God. She served God's people. She served the church, she served the temple, and also served God's people. She provided fabrics and clothing to all the widows. She had the ministry to the widows, and God remembered her. The people refused to bury her. There are some people who are assets in the kingdom of God because they are active in the work of the Lord. They are not idle in the house of God. Nobody is supposed to be idols in the house of God. So tonight also, you can become a worshiper of God. You can surrender your life to Christ and then you can become active in the service of God, active in the vineyard of God, just like David was active, Hezekiah was active, Paul was active. The problem with our Christianity of today, we profess to be worshippers of God, but we are idol in his house. That is not to worship. And tonight you have understood what it truly means to be a worshipper of God. And when you will pray, when you will present your case before the Lord, if you are serving him, not just with your lips, but you are active in his vineyard, you are a slave to righteousness 
then you can claim the benefits that you are entitled to that we have shown you tonight through this teaching so let's pray first and foremost for you to become born again and be part of this kingdom heavenly father thank you for your sons thank you for your daughters who are under the sound of my voice i pray king of glory that as far as uh, they are lord from you you draw them close to you because uh, you give them uh, your best not just your best you give them your all you only had one only begotten son and you gave him to die on the cross for the sins of the world and tonight my king and my savior i pray for your forgiveness and as many are calling upon your name forgive them of all their iniquities and all their trespasses and i pray king of glory that uh, the blood of jesus will wash away all their sins and uh, as far as is the east from the west the iniquities their trespasses and the lawless deeds you will forgive them and remember them no more in the precious name of jesus and we bless you we honor you in jesus precious name we have prayed amen